Aloha and welcome to today's session, the East-West Center Funding and Education Programs Information Session. My name is Kristen Connors. I work at the University of Hawaii at Manoa's Graduate Division. I'll be your moderator and running some technical support for today's webinar. Now, because we're gathering from all around the globe, rather than sharing a land acknowledgement from one location, we just really want to encourage you to be mindful of place, whether you're on land that is your home, a place that you're visiting, or somewhere where you may be a guest. We encourage you to think of the history, people, and meaning of the land and your positionality in relation to the full context of that place. We are excited again to partner with our neighbors from the East West Center. Joining us today are East West Center's Dean of Education Programs along with their fellowship scholarship and program staff. So you can learn more about the various funding and educational opportunities available for graduate students. Opportunities are available to current and prospective graduate students from around the world who are pursuing academic degrees at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. So to get us started, I would now like to turn things over to our lead panelist, Anne Hartman, Dean of Education Programs at the East West Center. Anne. Thank you, Kristen. Aloha, everyone. Uh, welcome. We're excited to welcome folks from all across the world, especially from the Asia Pacific region, which is the region that the East West Center is primarily focused on um, in our mission to promote better relations and understanding among the people and nations of Asia, the Pacific and the United States. So um, we welcome all of you. And uh, Ben, I think Ben's gonna start our slideshow here. Um, yeah, and you can go to the next slide, Ben. These are your presenters today. We'll just briefly um, take a look. You, We all will be addressing questions and things in the chat um, and, and through the Q&A. Please put your questions there. Uh, we will take questions at the end, but we will also be answering questions as we go along. So next slide. Today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about the East West Center and then also the East West Center Education Program and what you will be coming here to do as a student that is affiliated with the East West Center. Then we will talk about some of our scholarships and fellowships um, and then Q&A. Next, next slide, Ben. If you would like to join our mailing list and we hope you will, please uh, scan this QR code um, and sign yourself up so that you can get information about our deadlines and future scholarships and funding opportunities. So encourage you to do that. I'm gonna take just a second to let you jump on. Oh, we'll, we'll put that back up at the end. Let's do that then. Great. Um, this is a beautiful picture of the East West Center. Um, I'm gonna have Ben go to the next slide. So the East West Center is a national public nonprofit institution that was founded by the United States, States Congress in 1960. And as I mentioned, uh, we focus on issues and relations in what we now call the Indo-Pacific region, Indo-Asia Pacific region, um, that stretches all the way from Iran in West Asia, all the way through um, Northeast Asia, Southeast Asia, the Pacific Islands, and the United States in North America. Our mission that was part of our founding in 1960 was to promote better relations and understanding among the people and nations of the US, Asia, and the Pacific specifically through cooperative study, research, and dialogue. So you're gonna hear a lot about the cooperative study piece as we talk about what happens um, about our student programs at the East West Center today. We have a 21 acre campus here in Honolulu that is adjacent to the University of Hawaii at Manoa. So the University of Hawaii is a partner to the East West Center. We are not the same institution. We are a separate federal nonprofit institution based here. Um, but our campus has two dormitories, and that is where our students li live, study, and work together. Our major programmatic areas are research, education, professional development, which is short-term programs, and then with a very special focus on the Pacific Islands of the East West Center. Next slide. Again, we have been around since 1960, and we have a legacy of academic excellence, um, again, you can see here, we were ranked as 
uh, number four in the best government affiliated think tanks. And I will say some really big institutions are ahead of us, like the World Bank, Asian Development Bank, and the Congressional Research Service are the other three. And those are enormous institutions. So given how small we are, it's very impressive that we are number four in this list. And we have 66,000 alumni in more than 50 chapters around the world. Next slide. The students are the heart of the center and have been part of the center since its founding in 1960. Again, our campus was built with two dormitories with the intention of bringing students from Asia and the Pacific and the United States together here in Honolulu to pursue master's and PhDs degrees while also building relationships with one another and learning from one another, sharing ideas and um, trying to find ways to solve our shared challenges as a region. Some of those shared challenges today are climate change um, and uh, governance. These are some of the areas that the East West Center focuses on. Um, but students at the East West Center uh, are studying more than 90 different disciplines uh, today. So next slide. We want to we want to be able to show and not just tell. You're going to hear talking heads today, but we have a very short video uh, that gives you a little bit of a picture of what living, learning, and leading looks like at the East West Center. Ben? The East West Center fosters regional capacity and expertise by supporting graduate studies at the University of Hawaii while providing a dynamic living and learning community. The education program offers scholarships and affiliation opportunities to graduate students worldwide who share a commitment to enhancing relations between the peoples of the United States, Asia, and the Pacific. Designed to equip the next generation of leaders with cultural and technical expertise, the education program cultivates a shared sense of community and mutual understanding vital for addressing today's global challenges. Let's explore how students from over 40 countries, 30 U.S. states, and 90 academic disciplines learn, lead, and live together. My name is Priscilla Wong, and I am a graduate degree fellow at the East West Center. I'm originally from Taiwan, and I am getting my master's degree in learning design and technology in the education department. I think that the East West Center is just such a unique community. Everybody comes from such diverse areas of life. A lot of people are international students, and so part of what I'm trying to do in grad school is to learn more about the world so I got to know a lot of the people around my community and learn more about the world through them. The East West Center offered me so many opportunities to build up my leadership skills. Through one of my leadership initiatives as co-president of EWCPA, uh, I hosted a beach cleanup with a yoga session. I got a chance to host so many community engagement activities. Through Lunar New Year celebration, Eid celebration, and all of these other amazing events, people from diverse communities came together, learned more about one another, and made new friends. My name is Fiorenzo Tonkin, and I am from the Solomon Islands. I'm doing a master's in nutrition sciences. At the East West Center, I am under a scholarship that is known as the United States South Pacific Scholarship. When East West Center creates all these programs, um, such as the Community Building Institute, which is the first orientation program that happens when students come in for a new semester. And in that program, you learn a lot of things. There are guest speakers that come in, you learn about Hawaii, and you learn about other students, what they are doing as well. Sometimes my Pacific friends and I, we spend weekends just talk story, doing talk story in Halehala Vai, and all of that, it helps with you know, balancing out your school life, your student life, and also you as a person just trying to get through each day. My name is Mustafa Sherzad, and I'm from Afghanistan. I am doing my MA degree in economics at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And I'm also a graduate degree fellow with the East West Center. Living at East West Center facilities, it just enables you 
to increase your awareness and knowledge about different cultures. One of the unique characteristics of living at Hale Manoa is the shared dining area or shared kitchen area where students come there, they cook together, they eat together. And that's actually the time that you can actually meet different people and you can make a community. This funding opportunity enables students from less developed countries actually to come and pursue their goals and go back to their own countries and make change over there. Israel Center is a place to look forward to. It's a place where you learn, a place where you grow. Where I can make better relationships, I can connect with others better just because of the experiences that I've, I've lived here and I've gone through at the East West Center. If there's truly no other place like this. Through cultural exchange, professional development, and place-based learning, the center enhances individual and regional capacity, fostering lifelong relationships, and connecting a vibrant network of leaders committed to positive change for our region and the world. Wonderful. Thank you, Ben. Um, I hope that gave you a nice picture of what the experience really is like and a feeling for what we do here in the education program at the East West Center. This is a group of our students with our president, Susie Veris Lum. And um, next slide, please. The mission of our education program, as you saw there in the video, is to prepare the next generation to address the complex challenges facing the Asia Pacific region and the world. Part of this is getting your degrees and gaining the expertise and the mastery that you need to go and address those challenges. And part of it is building the relationships and the perspective across the region um, in order to be able to solve what we know are these wicked problems that are only solved across borders and across disciplines. Part, uh, a key feature of the East West Center experience is, as was mentioned in the video, the residential experience in the kitchens and living and learning together in these dormitories. Next slide. Our diverse and dynamic student community is again, a, a unique feature of the East West Center. Our community is one third Americans by design so that it truly is an East meets West experience happening in the dorm. So you can see here the breakdown of students, doctoral masters, um, etc. Next slide. Some of the students in the video mentioned the Community Building Institute. One of the things we provide at the East West Center that makes our program unique is we provide an overlay of programming for our students to help foster and facilitate the relationships that are lifelong and that our students take away from their living and learning experience. It can be hard to meet people and find a sense of belonging when you come to a new place. So we require a two week community building institute that students come and get to know both this place in which they will live for um, two or more years, which is very special, as well as each other and the East West Center. Um, it's a unique opportunity to, again, make friends, and gain a sense of belonging and community. Next slide. And then we have the exchange, which continues the experience of CBI or the Community Building Institute. Um, eight sessions, spring and fall, two hours every Monday night. It's a weekly seminar series designed and put together by your fellow students to help connect you to the issues in the region and the rest of the world um, and expose you to things that you might not otherwise um, have an opportunity to explore. Um, so hopefully it helps to facilitate those both academic connections as well as personal and professional connections in other spheres. Next slide. Our International Graduate Student Conference is another student-run, student-led experience here at the East West Center that brings students from all over the globe to share their work on the Asia Pacific region with other students um, from the region and here at the East West Center. 
Again, this is run entirely by our student community. Next slide. And finally, you heard it referred to in the video, our East West Center Participant Association called the EWCPA. And this is another leadership opportunity for our students. This is completely voluntary and it is um, our participant board, our leadership board that does both advocacy on behalf of the student community and organizes activities to bring the community together and to really form that sense of community at the East West Center. We believe that communities are built by the people in them and that everyone needs to play a part and take on some kind of role to help make a community vibrant and rich um, and all that it can be. So next slide. Other benefits of being part of the East West Center program is we have some funding for your student research, either to present your work at a conference or for field research expenses. These are competitive, you apply, um, but we try to meet as many student needs as we can with these travel grants. Next slide. And then finally, the East West Center is wonderful about trying to connect our students with both the local community, with the local community, both personally with our Ohana family program, but also professionally with our mentoring program that are run by the friends of the East West Center and our alumni chapter respectively. Um, again, You'll find that the community around the East West Center is big in Honolulu, and there are many people that want to support our students. Next slide. Again, the East West Center is an incredible value add to pursuing your graduate or master's, uh, your, your PhD or your master's degree at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. We as an institution ourselves have more than 66,000 alumni and as I mentioned, alumni chapters all over the world, but also provide an opportunity for professional connections um, outside of your department in ways that I don't think are available anywhere else at any other university in the world. Next slide. So this just gives you a broad summary of what the East West Center experience is for all of the students that live here. Right now we have 350 students that live in residence with us. These students come to us through different pathways. Um, some come with scholarships and fellowships, others have their own funding and come to us through our student affiliate program. I'm going to turn you over to our staff now to talk about some of these opportunities. Steve? Thank you very much, Dean Ann. Hi everybody, Steve Bell here, and I have the pleasure and the honor to talk about the Graduate Degree Fellowship. This is a two-year award for full-time study at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. It is funded, we will cover your tuition and fees there up to the, the equivalent of general tuition. We will provide you with a single room in our dormitories, a health insurance subsidy, a book allowance, of course, there are lots of ways to learn beyond books today. So you can get subscriptions and technology. You can uh, buy a computer, all kinds of different ways. You can get materials that you'll use in your class or in your courses. So we'll provide up to $1,300 annually to help you with those, those uh, costs for your semester. A living stipend of $500 a month pre-tax and a settling in allowance that helps you to get here and get set up, settled into the the East West Center uh, when you first arrive. Next slide, Ben. Who are graduate degree fellows or GDFs as we call them? Citizens of Indo-Pacific, Asia and the US. You must have a focus on Asia, the US or Indo-Pacific region. Obviously we're looking for people who want to better uh, humanity who have a service orientation, committed to networking and community building across cultures and across disciplines, prepared for leadership. You will, uh, if you look at some of our alums, lists of alums, you'll find there are some esteemed ones there uh, throughout the whole region. We have over you know, 70,000 or so uh, uh, alumni. Any academic discipline at the university, I believe in the graduate level, there's a 95 different disciplines. We welcome all of them. And academically excellent with a capacity to make a difference. So we're looking for people who 
view themselves as potential change makers, transformative uh, um, people who want to make a difference for all of us. Next slide. Live in residence. We'll repeat that again. As you saw in our, our, our movie, it was called Living, Learning, and Leading. First thing is living. You live in residence here. Starts with our CBI or our Community Building Institute, which is a two-week orientation and onboarding program. The exchange is required. This is our seminar that happens each fall and spring. And you do two semesters, all students do that. We also require an internship at the East West Center, which is one of the great uh, things that we have the chance to really develop those skills so that you can get experience um, to be a change maker. We have a community service requirement. You have to be a good student, stay in good academic standing at the university. I like to keep up with my students and I'll meet with you many times throughout the semester as well as require monthly reports. And then at the end of a year, we look at you and look at how you've done, uh, progress you're making, and hopefully we'll move towards a renewal for a second year. Next slide. Current students are eligible. We welcome students to join us at the East West Center. International students will have to come on a J-1 visa. That is a common question we have. It's right there, J-1 visa. We will provide that. and It'll be sponsored by the East West Center. Again, we're a residential program. That's a, a, a eternal theme you see there. And um, then Anne talked a bit earlier about the uh, we're adjacent to the University of Hawaii and us being a uh, independent organization. So you must apply both to the East West Center and the University of Hawaii and must be accepted to both for the GDF. Next slide. There is a, a QR code and a link there as well. I'll give a, I'll count to five and uh, please take a picture on that. Of course, you can watch the, the um, this info session again. You can watch the recording so you get that, but that is uh, where you can apply. And the deadline is December 1st. Three, four, five. Next slide. I want to turn it over to my colleague, Sophie Sadu. Hey, thank you, Steve. And hello, everyone. I want to just briefly turn your attention to another scholarship opportunity that we have that you may be considered for when you apply to the GDF program. This is called the Foundation Scholarship. It's one common application. So if you apply to uh, be considered for a GDF, um, you'll be asked to check a bar box to let us know if you'd like us to um, also review you with foundation scholarship consideration. Um, foundation scholarships um, are for those who are um, receiving other, other funding from other streams. Um, so it, it doesn't provide a tuition coverage, but it does provide many other provisions, such as a stipend of approximately $10,000 a year, and that can be applied towards your living expenses here, and we list a few different options you could apply that towards. Um, it also uh, enables you to receive discounted housing at East West Center. You must live in residence and um, you receive a, you receive discounted housing here. Um, and if you're eligible, it um, allows you to receive in-state um, tuition. Uh, so it's a really wonderful opportunity for, for you to join here in another scholarship capacity. Foundation scholars uh, fully participate in the East-West Center Residential Experiential Program. Uh, we're looking for those with similar qualities as Steve outlined um, in the GDF program. And we, um, we accept approximately 15 scholars a year. Next slide, please. And I will turn it over to my colleague, Robert. All right, hello, everybody. Uh, it's great to spend this time with you. I'm Robert Moore, and I manage a couple of our other scholarship programs, uh, the ones that are supported by institutions outside the East West Center. So we have a few of these. Uh, this first one is the Asian Development Bank Japan Scholarship Program. You can see it provides similar provisions to the Graduate Degree Fellowship, but um, also includes a little bit, uh, some, some other provisions as well. 
Um, the ADB scholarship provides full tuition, fees, books, housing, a stipend, health insurance, and we sponsor your visa. And then it also provides the round trip travel uh, at the beginning and at the end of your study here. Um, there are, there's a list of fields of study. This is only for master's degree study. Um, and to be eligible for this scholarship, you have to be a citizen of an ADB member country. Uh, you can look that up on the Asian Development Bank website. Um, under 35 years old, uh, have a bachelor's degree and at least two years of professional experience here. Um, the deadline to apply is December 1st, and it follows a similar application system as the graduate degree fellowship, where you apply concurrently to the University of Hawaii and to the Asian Development Bank uh, Japan Scholarship. If you fit this eligibility criteria, and if you're interested in one of these fields of study, I strongly, strongly encourage you to apply to this. Um, this is one that um, is, uh, is, is, it's only offered once every two years and the, the, the extra provisions can uh, be quite valuable um, if, if these apply to you. Uh, next slide. All right, and then another one of our um, uh, scholarships provided by an outside institution is the U.S. South Pacific Scholarship Program, and this one is supported by the U.S. Department of State. Um, it provides full tuition, fees, books, housing, uh, the all these provisions, plus the round trip travel to and from your home country. Um, for master's degree study in any of these fields or others, uh, and it also, this is the only one that provides uh, support for bachelor's degree study. So if you have a brother or sister or friend or, or uh, know of somebody um, coming up through and is looking for bachelor's study, this could be a, a good option for them. Uh, to be eligible for this scholarship, you have to be a citizen of uh, one of the independent South Pacific Island nations. They're listed here. Um, this does not include um, American Samoa or French Polynesia or New Caledonia, but if you're a citizen of one of those areas, you are eligible for the Graduate Degree Fellowship. I encourage you to apply for that. The uh, application for this is also um, a little bit unique. Uh, the due date for this is January 15th, and for the USSP scholarship, you only have to, uh, to apply to the East-West Center. You do not have to apply at the time to the University of Hawaii. Uh, we do an initial selection round at the East-West Center, and then um, we'll, uh, we'll manage the, uh, the, the application and admission to the University of Hawaii after that time. Um, so you can just submit to the East-West Center for that. Uh, next slide. All right, and I'll pass it over to my colleague, Sophie. Okay, and I just want to briefly mention another opportunity we have that is a non-scholarship opportunity, but we want to put this on your radar, which is our student affiliate program. And um, this application opens March 1st, so later on in the cycle, and it closes May 15th. Um, but if you are interested in being part of our East-West Center community, um, whether or not you apply for a scholarship program, um, as you're waiting to find out about acceptance to that, or if you don't get a scholarship and you still want to join our program, or if you have external funding and you're more interested in this program in particular, um, strongly encourage you to consider this. It's um, a very large program. Um, we're also so looking for candidates who have a similar profile as our GDF and Foundation Scholar um, students who are service oriented, um, who demonstrate leadership capacity and community engagement, who are interested in being part of our living and learning community here. Um, students must have a research interest in the Asia Indo-Pacific region and um, a passion for community building. And the, for this program, um, we don't have any uh, regional um, or citizenship um, restrictions. And it's also open to graduate students, master's or PhD, um, from um, any um, any field of study. Um, just briefly, um, this program can accommodate students um, essentially throughout the duration of their program, whether it's uh, their master's or their PhD program, um, as so long as they're meeting annual program requirements. So it's a really great way to build continuity and allow participants to be part of our community here um, throughout their degree time. Next slide, please. And um, just briefly, um, so uh, the student 
affiliate provisions, um, offer discounted housing, um, and there's information um, about the housing rate, the current housing rate, um, um, which is $19, $19 a night or about $580 or so a month. So really great opportunity to live here in our East West Center dormitories, as well as access to all of the um, networks and um, various opportunities to engage um, here in the East West Center community. Next slide, please. And if you're interested in learning more, um, please scan the QR code. That'll take you to the website. Um, as I mentioned, the application for this program will open on uh, March 1st, um, but you can uh, feel free to get more information and feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Thank you. And I will just briefly highlight these so we give time for a Q&A and our guest speaker, but these are the deadlines here for the Graduate Degree Fellowship, December 1st, December 1st. Program. We're not holding yet TBD um, January 15th for the USSP and student affiliate, as Sophie was just saying. Um, I will quickly reiterate what has already been stated for the GDF and ADB applications. You apply separately to UH and also to the East-West Center. There are different application forms, a few possible different application requirements, and um, also recommendation letters required for each, um, as well as for international applicants, have your passport information available and your um, IELTS or TOEFL or English proficiency scores if applicable. So with that, I will move on to Steve who will introduce our panel speaker. I am excited to introduce you to uh, a new initiative we have. It's just started a couple years ago and this year it doubles with uh, a second foundation helping us, but the two foundations are private foundations here in Hawaii who focus on Native Hawaiian students, Hawaii Pacific Foundation and the Alaka'ina Foundation. And they have funded graduate degree fellowships, same deadline as the regular one, but they also have, um, in addition that, they also have doctoral research awards. So if we have any people who are uh, far along in their studies at the ABD level or any of those kind of things, and they just can't finish that the, uh, doctoral thesis, that's another one that you could look at too. Next slide. Right now, uh, Wella is with us, and he is one of our GDFs funded by the Hawaii Pacific Foundation. And I'm going to turn it over to Wella, and he can tell us a bit about his experience here. There he is. Great. Go ahead, Wella. Aloha, Kako. Um, my name is Wella, Wella Hilani Wahilani, and this is my second year at the East West Center as a GDF fellow um, who receives funds from Hawaii Pacific Foundation. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be a part of the East West, um, to be able to learn amongst other like-minded folks from across the, um, across the globe. And I'm also super, super grateful to Hawaii Pacific Foundation to fund school because as we all know, school can be super, super expensive. Um, and so I'm super, super grateful for that. I'm, I'm grateful for the East West Center providing me multiple opportunities to grow as a leader, to grow as a community advocate. Um, this past summer, I was actually the intern for um, the CBI, the Community Building Institute. Um, and it gave me the opportunity to highlight my home, which is Hawaii and to take students and staff on experiential learning and to learn about what makes Hawaii so special to um, to me and to other Kanaka Maoli who live who live here or call this place home. Um, currently, I'm the director of two Native Hawaiian education program grants at the University of Hawaii West Oahu. And yeah, if it wasn't for the East West Center and introducing me to Hawaii, um, Hawaii Pacific Foundation and and to all the, the many friends I made at the East West Center, I think my journey through my doctoral program would be very lonely and very hard. And it's so much fun to speak with others, to share your thoughts and to be motivated by others who are going through the same journey as you and to live amongst um, other advocates and other leaders for their communities and for their home. So mahalo nui and Good luck to all of you who submit applications and I wish you all the best. Great, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Wella. Um, great to see you. 
So we are now open for questions. I know we've been tackling some of the questions on the back end. Um, our staff have been busy responding, but um, I will turn it over to Kristen to um, share some of your questions um, in this um, live session. So yeah. please put your questions in the Q&A um, if you have questions for our team. Again, they can be questions for our students or for our staff about the scholarships, about the application process, about the kinds of requirements and experience we have here at the East West Center. So please send us all of your questions and Kristen. Thank you so much, Anne, and, and thank you to Wella and to all our panelists for sharing about the wonderful opportunities available through the East West Center and your experiences. So we have received a number of questions. I'm going to try to get through as many as possible for today. Um, not sure if you want to stop sharing the slide or if you want to keep that up or go back to the QR code uh, because I know people were interested in, in scanning that again. So first question is, is there an application fee in order to apply for any of the opportunities you share today? And if so, can the fee be waived? So I'll quickly take that. I think it was also answered uh, behind the scenes. We do not have an application fee for any of our programs at the East West Center, but the University of Hawaii does have an application fee for its uh, master's and PhD for graduate division. We cannot waive that fee. If someone wants that fee waived, they need to address that with the university directly. And then, Robert, I don't know if USSP has a different situation if you want to address. Yeah, that's right. USSP okay. is a little bit different. Um, you only apply first to the East West Center, which does not have a fee. Uh, and then if you make it far enough in the selection process, the USSP uh, program will pay the application fee for you for the University of Hawaii. So there is no application fee only for the U.S. South Pacific Scholarship Program. Um, and what I can share about the application fee for UH Manoa graduate admission is that it is something you could discuss with the academic program you're applying to um, to see if that is an option they can support you on. Um, that is not universal, that is not guaranteed, uh, but if that is something you're interested in, you would have to inquire directly with the academic program you're applying to. Okay. Uh, next question, can dual citizens apply as long as you hold a U.S. citizenship? I'm going to say yes, but I'm going to allow our registrar to jump in if that is not the case. If you have a, a U.S. citizenship, and again, it may be complicated about where you fall in the pool. So, Ben, do you want to take that? If you have U.S. citizenship and uh, and can come to UH as UH as a U.S. citizen, then yes, you can be considered in the U.S. pool for consideration for the graduate degree fellowship. Mm -hmm. If you have if you have two citizenships and one of them is outside of the region, so not Indo-Pacific, um, but like say you were a citizen of Canada and, you know, the U.S. <laughs> you could come as a U.S. citizen, but not as a Canadian citizen to the, with the GDF scholarship. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you so much. Um, and speaking of citizenships, could you review either in general regions or show a list somewhere of which countries are um, students are eligible to apply from? Great. Ben, can you drop that link to that list? Okay, we'll drop that in the chat, um, a link to the list that's on our website. Perfect. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll drop it in. it's pretty extensive and I get, it varies by opportunity, correct? It does vary by opportunity. I will say the broadest one is the um, Graduate Degree Fellowship and the Foundation Scholarship are uh, basically broadly Asia Pacific and the United States, but not all of Asia. So um, it cuts off at Iran, basically. Um, and then Iraq and Turkey and those countries are not eligible. Um, the student affiliate program is open to everyone around the world. Perfect. That actually answered the next question. Um, okay, we have some question, more eligibility questions. Um, you talked about the J-1 visa. So does that mean that F-1 visa holders are not eligible to apply? So I think as Natalie put in the, the answers, you can apply to the graduate degree fellowship with an F-1 visa. However, if you get the fellowship, you will need to change your visa to a J-1. Uh, visa in order to participate. That is only true for the graduate degree fellowship. 
um, for the student affiliate program and the foundation scholarship, you do not need to change your visa. Got it. And then the United States South Pacific Scholarship and the ADB, you can't already be here and apply for those programs. So it's a little bit of a different status. Okay. What about, okay. And what about age limit? Is there an age limit for any of these opportunities in order to apply? No. Yes. Um, the age so yes, for age some. For our graduate degree fellowship, no. And for the student affiliate program, no. For the two that Robert manages. Foundation, no. And foundation scholarship, no. And not the USSP, but yes, for the Asian Development Bank Scholarship. The age limit is 35 years old. Got it. Okay, thank you. And if someone is currently pursuing a master's degree at another university, and then they want to come and do their PhD at UH Manoa, can they apply? For the yes. GDF, yes. And we welcome them and have had many of those. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, and then as, as you've all repeated, so much of what you do is this living learning experience. So is it a requirement for all of these opportunities that you live in the East West Center residence halls? Or is can you live off campus and still receive a scholarship? Or how does this work? Yes, yeah, Steve, why don't you jump in? The only exception that we have is if you have dependent children with you. If you have dependent children, you can live off campus because our dormitories do not allow ch people under 18. Other than that, you live on campus. Yeah, it, 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 again, it's a requirement to live on campus. And then, as I mentioned in the responses, go ahead and look at the Graduate Degree Fellowship um, for more information and details about bringing your family. So parent, student parents are eligible for all of our programs, except for the student affiliate program, which has some exceptions, no, you um, can, which is really a, a residential housing program. But um, otherwise, we are very open and um, Steve will work with you on how that works. Yeah, and read just, the application, the GDF application handbook. There's mm -hmm. a lot of those FAQs about those particular questions. And just to clarify, by when you're talking about dependents, right now the conversation has been about minors, children, right? If your dependents are children, but if you're a graduate student and you're just coming with your partner or spouse, can, could they live in the residence halls, the East West Center residence halls? That's Robert. You want to take that one? Yes, yeah. Spouses can live or partners can live in the uh, the residence halls along with the um, scholarship recipient. And and just to add a, a bit more, we do have a process for um, getting an approved spouse or partner um, approval from your program coordinator and from housing. So um, we'd be able to walk you through all of the steps involved in that. Right. And there are extra steps if your spouse is, if you're an international student and your spouse is in your home country, um, uh, to because then there are visa concerns to manage. But some of the scholarship programs do allow um, the, the dependent visa. Got it. So really, if you have a dependent in any situation, whether it's your partner or children, maybe they should just reach out to you at the East West Center to clarify um, what their eligibility is and what the best situation is for them in applying. Great. Thank you so yeah. much. Um, and for some of our graduate programs here at UH Manoa, they actually start in the spring semester, but it seems like a lot of the conversation is following a traditional academic year calendar. So if someone is starting graduate school in spring, can they still apply for any of these opportunities? Yeah, Sophie, do you want to jump in? Um, our, our programs do start in the fall, mm -hmm. um, and that in does include the student affiliate program. Um, However, um, as, as we have mentioned, um, you can be a current UHM student when you apply. So if a, if a student does start in the spring, we would not typically be able to accommodate them in the spring semester, but we would encourage them to, to apply um, so that they could begin in August along with the other students if they did get accepted. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you. Uh, Steve, you were talking about that year-long internship as part of the Graduate Degree Fellowship Program. Could you share a little bit more about that? What are some examples of what people have done for an internship? Yeah. Um, our 
as as we talked about in the in the um, video and whatnot, this is really a learning community here, and students lead our our learning. They are lead our curriculum. They're at the heart of the center. So the exchange, the International Graduate Student Conference, our East West Fest, our Community Building Institute, those are all powered, designed, and implemented by students doing their internships. Students can be in any of our programs and do that, but if you are a graduate degree fellow, you are required to do an internship. Thank you so much. Uh, so the deadline for most of these are December 1st. Uh, and so if the application for a graduate degree program someone's interested in does not open until after that, how how would that work out logistically <laughs> since they're not even sure if if they would be coming to UH Manoa? Yeah, Ben, do you want to jump on yeah. that? Okay. So typ typically, we, we require that in your East West Center application, you show proof that you've also applied to UH before mm -hmm. December 1st, and then have all your supplemental documents in to both by January 10th. But we recognize that this year, there's an exception with UH, um, with the School of Business. Scheidler system is not yet up and running and won't be until January. So we're making an, an exception for that. And there's specific procedures for how we're going to manage that. So just email scholarships at eastwestcenter.org if that is your situation. But otherwise, we require proof that you have applied to UH at the time of the East West Center application. Thank you for that. Um, speaking of degree programs, we have a, a couple of questions about that. Are there certain programs that are not eligible to apply for any of the opportunities? Steve, do you want to jump in? Um, yeah, I will say that we are looking for degree programs. We are not going for a certificate programs yeah and we are not going for like um night extension kind of courses they're the regular graduate school or one of the professional schools be it in law medicine business architecture i ask that you look at the uh gdf handbook and if you don't find the answer there you can always reach me through that or ben through that but they were looking for degree programs, regular admission. Yeah, and in some cases, certificate programs can be added to degree programs, but it can't go the other way around. You pursue a degree and then depending on the program and depending on your interest, you might be able to study for a certificate as well. Mm -hmm. um, so then actually related to that for the USSP, uh, someone could only find a certificate program that seem to be related to that. So are there other degrees they should be considering or other programs they should be considering if they're interested in that opportunity? Yes, um, they should look for the, the master's degree program that most closely relates to that area of interest. Um, uh, and I'm not familiar with you know every uh, master's program um, that that might be associated with a certificate, but I'm sure there there's there there's some kind of broader subject that the certificate could enhance um, in that case. And so the application should be for that master's program um, with the idea of uh, of studying that specific area within it. Just dropped a link for those are who are still looking at what programs to apply for at UH mm -hmm. Manoa. Uh, the link that I added to the chat box will give you the extensive list of all the degree programs we offer here at our institution. Okay. Uh, just in a general sense for some of these different opportunities, what would make an applicant competitive? Could you share a little bit more about the selection process and, and what that involves? Steve, why don't you take that one? Yeah, happy to. Great question. That's one that we get often. And um, to reiterate a bit on the slides that I gave earlier, we're looking for people with looking for leadership opportunities and leadership backgrounds with a service orientation and a focus on the Asia Pacific or Indo Pacific region. We're also looking for people who have demonstrated those things going forward. Maybe they've had a lot of civic experience, a lot of volunteer experience. That, that's the way they've, they've come up and they've worked cross-culturally or those are the impetus for them, as well as, as a baseline, strong academic background. But we're looking for a service orientation, leadership potential, community background, strong networks, and a good academic record. Thank you so much. Um, any last 
tips that you'd like to share? I know that we have several questions. Some of them seem very, very specialized um, with country or citizenship or visa <laughs> questions. Are there any other last tips or advice that you'd like to share with applicants as we round out today's webinar? I'll, I'll just Go jump ahead, in. Um, I'd say all of our applications, if you have not already seen <laughs> them, um, are you know fa fairly um, extensive. We encourage you to really take your time with them. And mm -hmm. this includes our student affiliate application as well, um, even though that's later on in the cycle. So yeah, please do familiarize yourself. Give yourself plenty of time to ask questions and collect all your documents. And um, yeah, really... Um, yeah, pay, pay attention to the essay questions and uh, yeah, sh share with us, um, you know, uh, as much about you as, as you right. can. We're, we're really looking for your stories. I would say, too, um, our, our tag is living, learning, leading. Think about the ways that you have done those things and why you want to be part of this community and then make that the, the basis of your, your essay. Talk about your experiences and what you would bring to it what you hope to gain from it, and your references should be accord with that. Um, you're looking for people who can speak to those backgrounds or that um, you know, know about why you might be a good fit for this experience. We're looking for those from academic references as well as community references. I would also like to add that um, there are some, uh, you know, um, in some places, especially in Asia Pacific, uh, humility is a strong cultural value. Um, in your essays, I would encourage you to uh, to be ambitious and to not be afraid to advocate for yourself um, and to let yourself shine. All excellent advice, thank you. And because there are so many questions that we have left um, to answer, what is the best way for people to reach out? Uh, are, are there answers on the website? Are there links they can refer to? Are there email addresses they should reach out to? Yeah, so I will emphasize that we have a lot of information on our website and I really encourage everyone to go through all of the different pages and scholarships and opportunities carefully. And once you have done that, if you still have questions and you would like more information, you can reach out to scholarships, Ben, and Ben can drop the link in the chat at eastwestcenter.org. Um, or program coordinators are often listed on the websites as people that you can reach out to for programmatic questions. So again, we're here this is partly why we're doing this webinar, so you can see our faces, you can see who is responding to your questions, um, but please do take a look at all the information that we have put together um, for you on the website, and then um, don't be shy about reaching out. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, well, I just want to give a big mahalo to all of our panelists today from the East West Center. Uh, thank you also to our numerous attendees for joining us today. Uh, whether you tuned in live or, or you'll be watching the recording later, uh, we hope that today's session really piqued your interest in the East West Center programs and opportunities at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Uh, before logging off, I did put a link for our session eval. We'd love to hear from you. So thank you so much for attending. This concludes our session. Please enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.